Good morning everybody out there, my friends. <laughs> I enjoy talking to you and visiting with you. And today I want to share because um, when I bought all these orchids on the table here, they were all small minis and, and uh, from Roehampton Orchids. And I filmed when I got them and they all came in moss. And those who watch this channel, I just don't do well in moss. Even though all winter, the humidity here is seldom over 40. Now, it poured rain all night and I think the humidity got to, I'll be out for here, 47. That's the highest we've had in a long time. Now, when you research these orchids, they all like about 60% humidity. So I do have my misters going in the window, but they also come out into the air because this isn't a grow room. It is our family area. So the conditions are not always perfect. And I still even though moss will keep things moister, did not want to grow in moss. <clears throat> so all of them uh, came, I think there was one might have come moss bark, the rest all came in moss. And um, I have over time and shown a few videos in the past switched to straight bark. And I did it by uh, the first day when I repotted them. I put half bark and half moss and I slowly over time checked how they were doing and pulled out moss and they are all in bark and have been for some time now and I want to show you how they are doing and the only way I can do that is to show you inside the pots. And some of them, and I realize this, they do not like their roots disturbed, but I'm going to do the best I can to show you how they are doing in bark. And the only other thing is these ones being in the baskets. And also, most of them like to be a wet, dry cycle. So, they don't like to dry out too much and being they're smaller containers and they have the core matting, most of them, then um, they dry out faster. So on regular watering day, which is normally Wednesdays, they get a soak for about 10 minutes. And on Sundays, which was yesterday, they get I take them to the sink and just put them under the tap quickly, not a long thing, to wet the bark, to add some humidity to last them till Wednesday. So when you see them today, you'll realize um, they did get some water yesterday. So they get water twice a week. And they have been in my new glass windows that face north. And we do have a grow light down one side of each window and I put them on in the evenings after supper and uh, not in the mornings now but earlier in the winter they were on in the mornings too and then off for the rest of the day because being the north side it's quite dark but now it poured with rain all night long but now the sun is out and it's very beautiful and those windows are getting lots of light so um, I want you to understand their growing conditions before we do this. Now um, there's only two that are different because they're in these pots. And um, I had them also in another pot which I took them out because they were staying too moist. And remember that if you have yours in bark and they're inside another pot, it is going to keep them more on the wet side because the air isn't getting through as well as they were just sitting like this, which is okay if you're really, really dry and you want to keep them moist. But even though we are so dry, they were staying a little too moist being inside another container. 
and also in these pots. So that was the only adjustment I made. So what I want to do is do them in order of how I bought them. So the first one is I had ordered on April 28, 2021, I ordered, and I think I'm going to get this name right, Falsheriana. I'll just show you the tickets because sometimes I get it wrong. Let's see. There we go. Falsheriana. And I did put the date on which I've started to do now from recommendations from some of you. And it is an excellent idea to date them, no matter if it's a no ID or what. You, it's a good, good way of keeping record of them. So I got Falsheriana. And um, she, she doesn't just... Uh, Okay, she blooms spring through summer, and when I researched her, I found people using bark chips and perlite, because I was, you know, wondering. And uh, they like abundant water and 60% humidity, and they like it warm. So um, we're trying to do that. So I'll show you a close up before I take her out the pot. So she seems quite healthy. And the, the leaves are firm. And she's still keeping her color. So I'll just take the tag out. And I don't, I, I, I think I'll probably end up taking her all out. Now, even though she got watered yesterday, the top is dry, but underneath is damp. So I don't want to pull on her. So, okay. Some of these roots have stuck, so I'm not going to pull on her, but I'm going to let you have a look at how she's doing in just bark. So, inside there is very healthy roots. There's also new roots coming, and these roots go right to the bottom, and they are attached to the pot. Now, I, I, this is a good way to check all your orchids to see how they're doing. The roots, the roots, then you can feel the roots. They're damp, but they're, they're firm. So, um, she seems quite happy. One of the original top roots um, didn't make it. It's quite dry. This one right here. It's dry. It's on the top. And being I always grow on the dry side, even these ones that like a little bit more uh, wet dry cycle. So we're just going to use the finger gently and put that back. And I'll leave that little dry one sitting on the surface for now. So I'm, this is all straight bark. This is what I shook out, and it is straight bark, and these pieces are quite damp, but yes, they get watered twice a week. The pots are small, plus they like that extra water. So, you know they don't like to stir, but you know, this is how we learn, and I want you to, you to see, you know, if you get an orchid, and it's in moss, and you like growing in bark, and you do the research, you find some people are doing it, and how they're doing it. It's always important to do research. And uh, make your decision. And my decision was, I just don't do well with bark. That was the first decision. <laughs> and I was scared when I saw all that moss in these pots, I have to tell you. I, when they came, I looked at them and I thought, oh boy. <laughs> but they were healthy plants. I think there was a couple that had a few roots I trimmed off, but they were healthy plants. And um, 
that that was a good thing. So Falsheriana is going into the growing season looking good. She will continue with the same practice of two waterings a week. One takes a little longer because I soak and the other one not so long. So I'm going to put her over there. Now when I ordered Falsheri Anna, I got a surprise bonus orchid. And uh, <clears throat> this is Alfinia. And those who remember, she had a spike that just flowered forever. And uh, that spike dried out and I have trimmed it off. And I'll probably, when I get the bark out, show you. <coughs> Excuse me. Now. She has a nice new leaf coming. I get so excited when I see leaves and new roots because in the growing season, it's just as exciting as seeing a flower. So we're going to check on Alfinia. I don't want to upset them too much, but I want you to see what's happening in there. So. Okay, I think I don't like to I don't want to take her out because some of the roots are already when when they start to attach to something they feel snug. That's why some people use small pots. I use usually bigger pots because they like to feel snug. But if you have the type of pot where they can attach, they feel like they are being hugged and they feel like they're in more of their natural environment. So that is just bark. I think I also had, um, I did put some lava rock in there. I forgot to mention that. I used in all of these some lava rock with the bark. So um, I, I had got it, it was, uh, it wasn't necessarily for orchids, but I washed it really well and I've been using it and it's quite nice. So let's just show you in here. Okay. Is she going to come out? No, she's not coming out. Okay, I'll show you this side. Lots of nice new shoots, even way down inside the pot. And then this side, now there's nothing soggy in there. I have not lost anything and I've slowly picked out all of the moss. So now we haven't disturbed her too much. The roots are feeling quite firm. I'm just checking. That was an old one. I must have trimmed off at some time. Okay. Oh, just shake this back in there. I like to kind of use my finger. I want to make sure it's in all the, the little spots surrounding the roots from the center. The best way to see how your orchid is doing is to check the pot. And I've done it regular because I had to pick out the moss. And it, they just slowly got used to the new environment. So that is Fel Alfinia. Now, very hard to find a lot of information on her. <clears throat> she did, um, the spike did dry up. And there's also one dry on the top here. I'm taking it off. <coughs> Excuse me. We've had company and they have perfume. I'm still a little we have lots of company. <laughs> oh dear. I thought people quit using perfume. There we go. Okay, so Falfinia is in there, but what I had to do when I was doing the research on her was I actually went by the parents. I found her parents 
and um, and then I took, oh, what kind of care did they have? And this was my research paper. I'll put that there. I'll probably fix them up a little tidier as I give them a good shake, actually. So when I did my research, these were the two parents. So then I looked up the information of how the parents like to grow. Um, small to medium sized orchid with purple flowers. She flowered continuously for a long time. They love bright light, so they're in these windows. Abundant watering during the growing season. And comparatively higher temperatures than other orchids. And she's just been getting the normal temperature that I get. So that was from April 28, 2021. So they're looking forward to a nice growing season and before I put them back I will make sure everything's looking just perfect. So <clears throat> that was the first one. And then on June 6, 2021, I ordered the Militanopsis Breathless Brilliant and Militasia Charles Maiden Finch. And I had this, it was a candle. Jack cut off the, the part that held a candle up. It was behind this piece of glass. But it works for hanging these baskets and they seem quite happy in there. So to help them feel kind of comfortable, I had put a little weight on the top, which I like to do sometimes till they establish in the pot long enough as they're not flopping around and feeling unsafe. So this is Militasia Charles Martin and June 11th, 2021. So how has she been doing? So first a look and then a look at the roots. The leaves all look fine. This is a new shoot right here and uh, still looking good. I see no wilts or they're all quite firm. And then I'll just go ahead and put a little support around it while I take something. Now I don't want to take too much because this is one of the ones that, yeah, they don't like to be too disturbed. So you'll see more one side than the other what's happening in here. Now, there is a lot of root growth in here. You can see there is a lot happening down inside. So, um... So that is just, whoop, whoop, whoop. okay, I disturbed her. Not too much, she's still hooked on one side. So, but I do want to show, I mean, it's a learning experience. So these are the old roots. Those are all new roots. And they are attached. They are attached to the, the fiber. So, is she doing well? Yes. And you can see, I'm going to show you, this is quite dry even though they got a run through, but I had a little more um, lava rock and bark. That's what I had. So I'm just going to put that back. I may give them a, a little bit of water before I put them back because I bothered them. But those New little roots are coming, a lot of roots out of one old root. And that's what I noticed. They're just branching out roots from, from an old root. And there's a lot of really nice growth happening. So, I will baby them a bit when I make sure everything's all around them quite nicely. Some of the roots are out in the air, and I don't have a lot of mist. These are on the top shelf. They've actually had no mist on. So, underneath I had the mister, so they haven't been getting a lot of humidity. They're not in a grow room, so this is, I think they're growing more like they're on a, 
on a bark, a piece of bark mounted or it's more like that type of growing even though they're not getting as much air but okay so now this one I I seen some people's sending their Militinopus and I had to get one and this is a uh, breathless brilliant and um, she has switched over to and also has a really good rooting system now she did have some trouble with pleating when I was getting used to the watering but the new ones are coming pretty nice these are new the new ones grew nice and long and tall and the first ones as I was getting used to the watering were shorter and pleated but these ones here are coming very nice and you can see also roots here. And I'm not going to take quite as much bark out of this one. But I want you to see because if you're scared to order something and move it from moss to bark. Once they adjust to bark, that's what they're used to. And I have found with the Philonopsis, once they're used to that bark and you're not overwatering them and babying them, they thrive on neglect then those roots are so hardy. Um, I really believe that. Now, you don't want to disturb it too much. Let's see if I can get something out. So I'm not going to take too much more out, but she does have a good rooting system coming. There's little roots way down in. So I'm, go I'm not going to disturb her too much. So nothing rotten, nothing, nothing shocking me. So that is bark and lava rot. Their, their roots are so tiny compared to the Phalaenopsis and I've never had these before. I can't get them unless I order them and then when I get them they're always very tiny. So I can't get a full grown plant here. And these still were, um, let's see, the Charles Martin Finch was $18 and Melatonopsis was $32 when I bought it as a baby. So I have been babying it, but uh, I'm glad they've adjusted and they'll be good in these pots for quite some time. So I will give them a real good shake and maybe a little bit of water. Um, They hang there like that, and I do, I'm not interested in getting a ton more orchids. The ones I got, I like them to have air space around them, and that's really important so air can flow. Rather than, you're more likely, if you keep them too wet, and there's no air flow, you're more likely to have bug and rot problems. So, um, hmm. You were supposed to be in, maybe we'll put you here. No, you must be here. We'll put you over here. We're not sure where we'll put her. I think it was in this one. There, we'll firm that one. It was a little more there. Okay, so that's how we're doing. Then, on October 28th, not that long ago, 2021, I got Falsogo Vecker, and she was the Peloric Orchid. And here's her ticket. I loved her. The flower lasted forever. And I'm going to show you the tag. Drop very, very there. Anyway, there's the tag. So, yes, and the date is on the back, October 28th. So, um, I know she's healthy because 
Um, she had one spike and I think she's growing another one. Now, she had the one spike flowers came off of and I think she just keeps getting flowers and getting a bigger healthy plant. Now I'm going to show you, I'm just pulling away some of the bark because it's amazing the roots and that also there's two spikes with both ready to start. I love Alfinia. And I love, Alfinia was the same, she just flowered for ages. And I love this little Peloric Orchid. Now, I'm going to try and see, now, see, there's a nice rooting system. Just bark and lava rock. But I'm not going to disturb her because she has a brand new spike coming, plus the spike that had a flower. This flower that was on the end, it lasted for a long time. I have to show my finger so I can get it. But down in here, under this leaf, there's another spike coming. Her, she's healthy, she's happy, and um, she seems to love her banana tree. <laughs> and I'm sure happy about that. So she is doing very well, and um, I'm not going to disturb her any more than that because I see enough good growth, and she sent giving me all the signs of a very happy little plant. So I have broke all the rules on these and done it slowly. I didn't like get it and put it right to bark. Uh, some of them I spent. A little longer maybe just once a month going in there and picking bark out but the first time I picked it out I picked a lot so the next one is Fal Mini Mart and um, thank you Marianne again I love these little pots and do you know I have seen you can get bigger ones of these at the Dollar Tree for next to nothing with the chain, with the basket, and that's got to be the cheapest orchid pot I can think of, even for your fowls if you have the bigger one. The problem being you need to hang them or find a way to have air still get around them, especially you don't want to sit them on top of another pot and not have any air get here because this is the pot part that stays wet longest. So this is Fell Mini Mart and she gets beautiful flowers and I'm going to show you what's happening in here. Their root system is definitely bigger but there is a very good root system all around. The leaves are doing good, the color is good so, um, I wanted to share with you, even though maybe some of them might be a little bit upset for a while, they'll just have to pretend a little storm came <laughs> and uh, disturbed them, which is a natural occurrence in the woods. So, um, I wanted to share that because I am happy about it. It makes the care for me a much easier and... Uh, this is my Rexius bark that here in BC we have a, a local BC owned farm and garden store called Buckerfield. So even though they do not carry the bark, they kindly order me the great big bag, comes up to my waist of medium sized Rexius bark. And the price, well, it'll probably go up the way life is these days, but it's been around just over $30 or something. And it's huge. So when you think about it, you know, the little bags are so much. And that's all I use. I'm, I'm, and my watering schedule, which I gladly share with anybody. And what I do like about my water schedule is it's not the same fertilizer every week. I water. Over the days, <clears throat> it changes. Each once a week watering 
is different. Uh, I think there's uh, three days I give a fertilizer and I will be switching very soon now to the higher nitrogen for the growing season and very soon uh, probably even next watering day. So I'll be switching from the high middle number to the higher nitrogen number or a balanced fertilizer that's almost balanced with that nitrogen a little higher because now for the growing season helps the leaves a tremendous amount. And also the other days I water I have the black tea and black tea has so many benefits I talk about them on the water schedule. I should retype it one day, but it's the same one I use. And it has many benefits that are natural, organic, and more like what they're, they're in the uh, wild used to. And um, they also get seaweed extract one watering day. It's actually even my water schedule, I think there's six days, so so it's like one and a half months of watering. So anyway, I, I, uh, if you want the water schedule, I will send it to you if you email me at carolynorchidfriends at gmail.com and I'll put a link in the description. So I hope that has helped some of you. And I feel good, and I still got lots of flowers on my orchids, and I got some in spike now, and uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful that we are lucky enough to be surrounded by plants in our home, and and I think it's good for our health and and just for a nice. Uh, it's like a holiday away to me. To sit here with the flowers and the plants. <laughs> and it's nice for me to share with you and hear how you're doing. And um, I love to hear from you. You can email me whenever you like. You can leave a comment and I will get to you. So thanks again and uh, happy orchid growing. <laughs> Bye for now.